Y'all ready? Good afternoon, everybody, except the Saints fans. Hope you guys are having a great day today. Thank you all for being here for the Mayor's News Conference. We do have several things to address. One of the things that we will be addressing is Thalyamara Hall, but I want to remind everybody there is a tab on the city website that gives updates on Thalyamara. So we're not giving any specific updates about what's happening inside, Th inside Thalyamara. Today we're just addressing the fire marshal's um, report that was released. So we don't have any updates on what's happening at Thalyamara. If you need those, go to the tab on Thursday, which is when it will be updated. We'll take a few questions at the end, but with this or that, I will turn it over to the mayor. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, and we'll dive straight in uh, so that we can get to your questions as well. Uh, the first update that we have is with respect to J. Tran. Uh, on Friday of last week, we met separately with both J. Tran and uh, J. Tran Union uh, and MV, and uh, I believe that we had fruitful discussions. As a result, our legal team has been speaking with both sides uh, on a continuous basis. And we feel as though we are close to a resolution that will ultimately end the strike. Uh, but if that does not happen within the next uh, day or so, we have uh, a plan to announce, at the very least, service to our paratransit para ridership. Um, and we will be looking to accomplish that so that those that are in the greatest need are able to be provided service. Uh, once something is official and in writing, we will update the public with respect to both, uh, either or uh, either or, or both. Uh, if an ultimate solution that ends the strike, then obviously in that event, it would not be necessary to announce paratransit services because uh, the complete services will be uh, restarted. With respect to Thal Yamara Hall, uh, the state fire marshal's report uh, that came out last week, uh, crews within Thal Yamara Hall will work to address most, most of those issues once it is safe to return into Thalyamara Hall. Uh, as Melissa stated, uh, there are reasons that we don't want anyone in Thalyamara Hall until the remediation goes forward. Uh, but uh, once it is safe to return, uh, the Jackson Fire Department's uh, fire marshal will work to assist Thalyamara crews to address the issues. Uh, contractor, uh, a contractor is on standby uh, to address the biohazard issue that was on the balcony. Uh, to be clear, before this was announced uh, to uh, the public through the state fire marshal's report, uh, we were already looking to remediate the challenge of uh, the unhoused going into the balcony area, uh, not only for their safety, uh, but for the safety of those who work at Thalyamara Hall, uh, sometimes being startled by uh, someone resting or setting encampment up in one of those areas. So we're already looking at uh, methodology and, you know, a change uh, to the stairwell, the, the out, outside stairwell, uh, so that access to that balcony is not, easy, is not easily accessible to those individuals uh, who will sometimes find ways to encamp there. Uh, the Jackson Fire Department is working to limit that access as well. Um, and assist those crews. Uh, an announcement with respect to the Ward 2 election. We know that there is an open seat. Uh, absentee voting started today. Uh, cast your vote here at City Hall in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Uh, to accommodate the absentee voting process, the Municipal Clerk's Office will be open from 8 a.m. to noon. And on Saturday, September 21st, from 8 a.m. to noon, uh, on Saturday, the 21st and the 28th. So on Saturday, the 21st and the 28th, City Hall will be open for you to go to the Municipal Clerk's Office to vote from 8 a.m. to noon. 8 a.m. to noon. The last day to vote by absentee ballot is Saturday, September 28th. Um, so I, I announced those dates. So that's the last day that you can do that. Uh, National Night Out. National Night Out will be October 1st this year. Uh, as always, we're looking forward to visiting neighborhood, local neighborhoods and speaking with residents. We will also join at a particular point in the, in the night uh, the Capitol Police and other law enforcement agencies at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Uh, so we will do our normal uh, 
drive through the neighborhoods and meet with neighborhood associations, uh, their presidents and, and the residents that live within those neighborhoods. But we will join at some point in the night uh, the Capitol Police and other law enforcement agencies that are having an event at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Uh, there is a senior health fair. Uh, please mark your calendars for October 3rd. Senior citizens, uh, uh, that health fair uh, will be at the convention center. Uh, so once again, October 3rd, we're asking that seniors come, those who uh, provide services to seniors. It may also be beneficial for you to join us. But that is October 3rd at the convention center. And then the last thing that I want to announce is the state of the city. Uh, the State of the City will be held on 1010, uh, October 10th uh, of this year at 6 p.m. at the Ice House. Uh, the public is invited. We're also inviting local vendors uh, and restaurants to showcase their talents and services by setting up booths uh, at the State of the City address. It not only helps us provide food for those that are in attendance, we want to market your business. We want people to know what Jackson offers. We want people to know the culinary genius that we have in the city. So uh, if you're interested, you can please email us at media at jacksonms.gov. Once again, that's media at jacksonms.gov in order to, uh, to uh, make your interest known about having a booth. With that, that is the only thing that I have prepared for you, and I'm ready to accept any questions that you may have. Yes, sir, Mr. Warren. Uh, Mary, two questions for you. Uh, one regarding value in Mara Hall and one regarding Bayfront. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with the Bayfront question, if you don't mind. Uh, Mara Hall is a very popular place. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance of that being converted into a restaurant in the future? Is that something that you would be interested in? Is that something that you would be interested in? We've had discussions with MV. Uh, part of our contract for them is in circumstances of a, of a strike or uh, force majeure, um, that they have, to, they have to demonstrate or communicate a plan of how they might supplement or, or provide service. Um, and so they have begun the conversation with our legal department about what that looks like, but we're hopeful that we can see a conclusion to the strike uh, in its entirety. Um, while we will, if, if necessary, we will implement the fix, right? Uh, we want to see, or implement the patch, we want to see the ultimate fix uh, that, you know, uh, and restoration of its complete services take place. Uh, there were fruitful conversations that took place this week, um, and I think that, that we should be on the precipice of, of an agreement and ending that particular strike. But uh, I don't have anything in writing to announce today, uh, so until I do, uh, please just wait for our communication on that in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, just do a little research on this, and this was something that um, I looked into. Uh, there was, you said last week the city didn't have money to address the air conditioner needs for the last decade. Mm -hmm. um, however, as of 6.30 of this year, there's mm -hmm. still Yeah, so uh, the money that was allocated is for uh, the multitude of things that we've already listed. Uh, and so we were very aware of that money. Uh, it wasn't because we were sitting on our hands. It was because many of those things needed to be contracted, bidded out. Uh, the scope of work needed to be completely identified. Uh, and so this isn't like working on our houses, uh, Anthony. This isn't that we just select a contractor and start working. That $400,000 that you spoke to is for the air conditioning unit. Uh, that is why it's sitting there, uh, because as I said to you, we're waiting on the engineering specs and all of that to be accomplished. We can't go to an engineer before we have money and say, listen, give us the specs, start this work, but we don't really know how we're going to pay you, right? Uh, so that is what you're seeing is a process played out. Uh, what, what has created the interruption 
is that while we're going through each one of these steps, unfortunately we had an un, uh, the, the decline, the, the further decline of the air conditioning unit, uh, which is hence what you know, necessitates our conversation with you today, right? We wouldn't be talking about it and you would be none the wiser if it had just held out a little longer and we had made our request, the money had been applied, the engineering had been done, and then we replaced it. Unfortunately, that didn't, it didn't agree with us in that regard. And so now we're talking about um, how we have been moving towards that process. We knew what the money was. In fact, we had had conversations with our legislative uh, delegation about the needs of Thalia Hall. We had our directors and our leadership go and not only speak to that, just like we did with the planetarium. Uh, we not only talk to people locally, we talk to people nationally about the support of that, and we've done the same thing for Thalia Hall. Uh, unfortunately, its decline has been more rapid than our plans, uh, than, than the timing of our plans. And so Thalia Hall is going to be just fine. I look forward to the day that that is no longer a discussion. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about not only how we make these uh, low-hanging fruit repairs that need to be made, but how we move it into its, its next phase. Yes, sir. Uh, you, Charlie. <laughs> uh, so last week, Mike Williams said that there had been a strategic plan for Diamara for over a year. Is there any chance we can look at that? Yeah, when we say strategic plan, um, I, I don't know entirely. There, there have been plans with respect to the repairs that needed to be made. A strategic plan in my sight is something that is beyond just those repairs and, and the, the concerns that we see. Uh, many of those concerns that were announced uh, by an interview uh, on one of those stations are, are things that had already, you know, were in the purview of not only the administration, but those, uh, the deputy director, Mike Williams. And what I was outlining when I was going through the list of things, I was showing you that you know, while there had been a statement that it had fallen on deaf ears, that there were already contractors looking at this, right? That there was already work going on. To your point earlier, Anthony, you know, these are the repairs you are aware of today, right? You're not even speaking about the investment and the money that we put in before the IBC took place, right? So as I said last week, I'll reiterate, Thalia Mara is an aging building, so there's not just a set of repairs that need to be made and then we're in pristine condition. Once we make these repairs, I'm sure we will identify other repairs that need to be made as an aging building uh, necessitates. So uh, we spent, uh, I think, over 68000 on Thalia Mara uh, for the IBC, um, you know, and, you know, part of this work is, you know, not only those that allow the production to take place, but you know, we have a few, and I emphasize a few, right, uh, restroom, uh, you know, um, toilets that need to be repaired. Out of the dozens that are there, it's a few that need to be repaired. So that is part and parcel of, of the work. And then just, I got a question. Mm -hmm. um, can you kind of just, is there any more detail about what this, like, plan for the paratransit is going to be at this point? I, the, I haven't even had an opportunity to review it personally. Um, we said that we wanted something in writing to communicate how they would effectuate uh, the paratransit services if need be. I think that they have, uh, they have created that document at this point, but I have not had an opportunity to review it. Um, and I will review it, but my hope, because I know where the discussions were this, pro this, past, this past week, uh, my hope is that we just end the strike and, and it's no longer necessary to implement that. Uh, anytime you have a contingency plan, uh, anytime you have an emergency effort that goes forward to stand up those services, it is never quite, you know, ideal. It is not what you desire. It is that. It is temporary in nature. Uh, and so instead of us pursuing that, I'd rather pursue uh, the quality transit and uh, transit services uh, collectively that the city provides on a routine basis. That's what I would prefer. Yes, ma'am. As far as the staff on receiver back at Diamond Hall, what, how much information was it supposed to be on the staff in support of the fire marshal's report? Uh, the fire marshal's report, uh, which, let me just say this, there were, you know, a lot of those issues were very minor issues that won't take long to, to deal with, period, right? Uh, the biohazard thing is, is not something that is, uh, you know, a week's long pursuit is a cleanup and, and it's to ensure that we don't have um, the unhoused getting up in that area anymore. And, and so that's what we will do. We were already 
reviewing, walking with the deputy director, talking about where fencing, and you know, when I say fencing, fencing to not only uh, eliminate people's access to those areas, but also maintain the aesthetic appeal of Thalia Hall, right? I don't want Thalia Hall to, to look like some caged uh, facility. We want it to look like the beautiful facility that it is, but at the same time be uh, aware and prepared for uh, those that are unhoused that, that often venture up the balcony area. Uh, so many of those repairs were, were minor, but what we're going to communicate with you on are those repairs that we've already talked about and the schedule of those repairs and when they will take place, when something is accomplished, we'll let you know. Uh, when something is pending, we will, we will do that as well. Uh, so that's what we intend to continue to communicate. Uh, and thank you for bringing up the tab because as promised, we told you we would create it. It is there now uh, and we will continue to update it with uh, the, the necessary information. I'll give you one more, Anthony. What's going on? All right. Um, the next question I have is um, fire marshals report that came out. I know the city does regular inspections, so the city fire mm -hmm. marshal does regular inspections of the building as well. Have these issues been found before, or are these new issues? Um, I, I don't have the requisite information to speak to that. I, I think, you know, I choose to communicate on a level of where we're going and how we're going to respond to these things. Anthony. There's no coincidence that we talk about Thalia Mara Hall and the things that we're doing, and then there's a sudden inspection of Thalia Mara Hall. Uh, there's a lot that, that is behind those things. Um, there are things that I, I can't speak on uh, based on, um, you know, HR uh, work that, or HR uh, restrictions. Uh, but we're going to push forward with Thalia Mara. Uh, we're going to fix those minor issues that the state fire marshal uh, in our pop-up investigation or, or inspection uh, identified. Um, and what I want to be clear on is that there was nothing discovered uh, that would indicate that that facility is some impending severe danger to the public. Um, and so we respect the, the information that was laid out in that report. Um, and given that that information is there now, uh, we'll take the time, and it, I think it's ideal, the fact that it's already closed. Uh, once we remediate the, uh, the challenge with the, the growth that took place and we allow people back in, then it will give us an opportunity to knock out these challenges. And what, I don't know whether there was a report before from the uh, Jackson Fire Department, and they have many facilities to go to, not only city facilities, but privately owned facilities. So they're, they're working day in and day out to uh, look at fire issues or fire code issues, uh, the good news is, is that we have them to our benefit to work alongside Thalia Mara Cruz to make certain that, that you know, not only what the state fire uh, marshal identified, but other issues that they may not have revealed. The fact that we'll have our crews there will give us the information necessary to know what a fire hazard is and, and deal with it. Uh, it is what it is. That's all I'll say. There was a fire, uh, a state fire uh, marshal's report done. We're going to take that information and address it. That's, that's, that's all I, I'll communicate on that. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.